Hello and welcome to the Slingshot Channel. On this beautiful third advent 2018, as you see it had snowed in Germany, which I like it and also my dog likes it. And for some reason I'm these days walking the dog more often than usual. <laughs> anyway, just joking. Now, you know, when I used to do sponsoring, when I was still a professional YouTuber, I liked the challenges for my sponsors. I missed those. So I decided to set myself up some own challenges of mine, completely unsponsored. So I recently was given this really old brake barrel air gun. I think it dates back to the 1960s. It's a Diana 35. Let me see if the camera will focus. Okay, it's a Diana 35. Uh, and since there's no date stamp on it, no year on it, it must be made before 1970, I guess. So it's really old. And um, as you see, it was rusted and I removed most of the rust and now it is in need of a new bluing. It's a fine air gun, very sleek, but I thought, is it possible to turn this into a bullpup? So this is the challenge for today, to turn this into a bullpup with a homemade stock. Now this is not as easy as you might think, because if you want to make it a bullpup, we got to move the entire trigger part to about here, because this will be the end of our stock. So, you know, we're getting rid of all this here. The question is how to do that, because when I break down the barrel, see there's this lever, and this lever would be in the way of the trigger system here. So, huh, how can I overcome this without making this really, really high? Hmm, I think I can do it. Let me show you what I came up with. <laughs> so when we look under the hood, <laughs> remove the stock and the red dot side, this is actually the air gun. As you see, this is the trigger group. And uh, there's the spring running in here. There's this lever that, when I break it open, will push back the spring. Now, of course, I know that this actually is a pre-1970 air gun. This means that it can be stronger than 7.5 Joule, but this one isn't. It's probably because the spring may already be a bit tired. So this, this is doing like 6 and 6.5 six and Joule, therefore, which is good because then I can still shoot it indoors. I could, of course, install an original replacement spring and then have a probably 13 to 17 Joule air gun again. In any case, as you see, this one needs to go into a stock. And let me show you how I've done that. And this is actually the shape of the stock that we're gonna have later on. As you can see here, the entire system with the spring, everything is housed and uh, the barrel the poker to the front. And this is the room for the lever that cocks it back. And, um, and this is the space where you will load the pellet into the, uh, into the barrel. And here you can now see the mechanism. This is the left side of the stock. And this is how it looks from the inside. And as you can see, since it's illegal in Germany to tamper with the trigger of an air gun if you don't have a gunsmith license, I didn't do that. I had simply attached a bit of string to the trigger here, and the string goes over this roller all the way up to the trigger here. And as you see, this trigger pulls on the old trigger. Very, very simple, yet totally effective. And as you see, this now is so much shorter this ends here, and normally I would have the entire rear stock of the device attached. So this is comparably small, even though it looks a little bit high and bulky. And that is because I need to house the trigger without messing with it. So, and this is it. The full-blown bullpup brake barrel air gun. <laughs> Let me show you its features. Well, as you see, I was able to mount this fairly low in it, but only because I turned it around. So now, when I open the brake barrel, you can see that all the action, inclus inclusive the lever that takes so much room, is now upwards. All right, now we have very short distance indoor shooting, but it's not so much to show you the precision of the air gun, which is really good, but it's more like to show you how it operates now that it is in this new stock. But first of all, I put the red dot active, okay? Now, normally a brake barrel air gun you would go this way, but not with this one here. This you just get, go that way. And as you see, now the loading slot is here. And it's actually not hard to load. You simply take the pellet, put it in, this, and close the old thing again. Very easy. And now let's shoot. 
Bang! <laughs> it's so much fun. Not one more. Yeah, of course, there was no more air in the balloon. And I think that it's now pretty sexy. So, I think I mastered my own challenge, don't you agree? It's now a much more compact weapon. It's about 28 centimeters shorter than it used to be. I still want to attach some kind of like a false silencer to make it thicker here, so it looks a little bit more solid and not so spindly. <laughs> I think the optics will benefit from it. And also, I'm not quite happy with the burn staining. Probably I will go for a full black or maybe camouflage optics. But in general, I proved that it is possible. So, bullpup brake barrel air gun. <laughs> what do you think? Did I master the challenge? Let me know down below in the comments. I have one more thing to tell you today. And this is that I have decided to make another exclusive limited knife series after the really big success of the Razor Tanto that was sold out in like 12 hours or so. <laughs> but of course, I don't really want to do the same knife again. That will stay limited. So the lucky few who got one will now have a collector's piece. Now, this time I want to make a really big knife. I want to make a knife that actually looks a little bit like a short sword, like an Ulfbert sword from medieval times. So this means it needs to have a wide blade, only very slightly tapering, uh, ideally sharp on both sides, maybe one of the edges is false, but it really needs to look like a sword blade. And it must be thick, like eight millimeters thick, much thicker than you would usually uh, to make a blade for a folding knife. So it will be a veritable folding Ulfbert. And um, I look at what is on the market and the closest thing to one that I found was this here. Okay, and it's, it's a cheap knife and it's, it's really not bad for the money. I don't like all these religious symbols. I rather like my toys without religious symbols on them. Uh, but it is assisted opening, so it opens. Uh, manufacturer is Tech Force, which is probably from China. It looks like a dagger. But uh, one of the edges is false. Um, the uh, handguards is uh, integrated in the blade, which I like. It's all in all, it's a nice metal solid knife. Kind of cool looking in spite of the religious symbol. It has a liner lock. And of course, assistant opening, but it's really easy to close and open. But it is way too small. And the blade is way too thin. I want something a lot bigger. I want something like ideally with 12 or 13 centimeters of a blade. And I want a handle that really fits my hand and, uh, and it also has a pommel. So it has a counterbalance, just like a medieval sword. So I've started to do some experiments and let me show you my third iteration made from wood, of course. What else? So this is it. <laughs> The third iteration of my folding Ulfbeard, entirely made from wood and a little bit of paint. <laughs> As you see, it's supposed to have a really nice pommel, but the pommel also is a part of the frame. This means that I even integrated a little liner lock here, made from wood, of course. When you close it, you can see that the entire length of the handle is used. Therefore, it's really not that long. But if you open it, then you see that you have for a folding knife, you have a really, really long blade. And it's also super wide. I'm still experimenting with the size of the pommel, so we're really seeing knife design in real time now. So, uh, because I think this is a little big, but if I make it a lot smaller, this would mean that I would also have to make the distance between the handguard and the pommel longer, which I don't like because now my hand is nicely clamped in, as was the case with medieval swords. So therefore, maybe I have to structure it a bit so it doesn't look that big, big anymore. I did have a smaller pommel in the, uh, in the old uh, previous iteration though. Here. So as you see, this was a much more, much more thin handle with a much uh, shorter pommel. But you can also see that this would not clamp in my hand just as nicely. There would be room between my index finger and the uh, handguard. And also, of course, the blade would poke out a lot. 
Now I'm also thinking about making this a little wider so the pommel doesn't look that big and maybe also do a little more tapering on the blade so that it would completely disappear into the frame when you close it because this would allow me to really sharpen both sides and not have just a false, uh, false edge on one side. So as you see I'm still quite some steps away from a final design but I'm getting there but I'm still in love with the idea to make a folding Ulfbert. <laughs> and probably this time we'll make 999 copies. <laughs> and it will take of course approximately one more year until it's available, simply because it takes the uh, knife maker so long to come up with all the toolings and so on. So stay, stay tuned. Before it's time to say thanks and bye bye, <laughs> one last thing, it's actually a sad story, because one of my followers contacted me, uh, a man, a family actually from the US, because their granddaughter is missing in Germany. Actually, her name is Jamie Lee and she disappeared from a youth center in Papenburg. Uh, on December 4th. Uh, so she left and actually did not come back until this day. Uh, I'm, I was tempted to put some pictures of Jamie Lee into this video, but then again the police says it's very hard to remove these from a YouTube video once they're there. And they don't want the uh, children, the kids, once they're found, to really be confronted with that story for the rest of their lives. So I put the link to my Facebook page down below. You'll find some pictures, some additional pictures of her in there and also a link to an article with the police numbers and so on. So if you are near Papenburg, if you have seen Jamie Lee somewhere in Germany or elsewhere in Europe, please contact the police under the number in the article or send me an email or send me, I don't know, a message on Facebook, whatever. Uh, it would be really great if we could find uh, Jamie Lee and help a fellow slingshot enthusiast. Thanks. So, I hope you like this because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks and bye-bye.